Hey YouTube, I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be talking about updating your BIOS on your motherboard for better support with things like memory compatibility, security vulnerability fixes, faster post times, and just general best practices and stability. It is best to be on a newer BIOS because you benefit from things like security vulnerability fixes, improved memory compatibility. A good example with memory compatibility is the memory training times. Those of you on AM5, especially those of you that have been on AM5 since the early days when the platform launched back in 2022, you would know that the memory training times are quite long, especially the initial one from a cleared CMOS or a brand new build. With the newer BIOSes, a lot of that is removed from the experience, meaning now it trains much faster. You get into Windows from a cold boot much faster than you used to, and in general, the memory is a lot more stable. So what we're going to show here is how to update the BIOS because I get this comments like this all the time asking me about like, oh, I can't get four sticks of memory running at 6,000 or whatever. And generally the reason why that's the case is because either the memory is mismatched, it's not the same kit or whatever, or it's on an older BIOS. And that's why you probably want to update the BIOS if you want to run four sticks of memory. So I myself have been using the X870E ASRock Nova with a 9800X3D for several months now, basically since we built this computer. However, I do want faster boot times and things like that. So in general, I wanna be on the latest BIOS. So what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a 32 gigabyte USB thumb drive. It needs to be formatted FAT32 for the UEFI in the motherboard to detect it. So we're going to show this with a camera in front of a monitor just to kind of show this in real time so that you guys can follow along. So the first thing you want to do, obviously, you need to go download the BIOS. Make sure, like I said, you have a thumb drive plugged into the USB port on the motherboard. doesn't matter which one. Just plug it into one of them. And it needs to be formatted with a file system of FAT32. If it is not FAT32, it will not work because the BIOS will not be able to read or detect the drive or read from the drive if it's not this format. So that's step one is make sure, and that's why that's why I don't recommend thumb drives that are larger than 32 gigabytes. All right, so now we're gonna go to the motherboard in question. In this case, we are working with a ASRock Phantom Gaming X870E Nova Wi-Fi. So we're gonna scroll down on the product page to where it says support, and it brings up this menu here and then we're going to click on BIOS and then it reveals the entire table. So the latest one is going to be version at time of filming in this video, 3.40 or 3.4. This is the latest BIOS at the top of the list. You can see how many BIOSes have existed since the very first release all the way down here. So we're gonna download this one. So there's the global one and there's the China one. The difference is the documentation is either gonna be in Chinese or in English. So we're gonna click on the global one but before we do that, you can see things like, oh, this BIOS was released on August 28th of 2025. It is 13.36 megabytes. The update method, if you need to read how to do it, they've got the instant flash documentation and they have the flashback. Instant flash documentation is basically their procedure for how you use the BIOS menu, how you navigate through the BIOS menu to update the BIOS. The other way is through flashback, and flashback is how you do the BIOS update without going into the BIOS. This one is the more advanced method. This one is also used to recover from a bricked BIOS, so that's why there really is, there should be no fear in updating the BIOS, because even if you were to brick the BIOS, you can just use this procedure, which is right there, available under the flashback right there in red on how to recover it. But we're gonna be doing the instant flash method in this video. So we're going to download, and you can see the description, this is what it does. Update a GISA, so that is the AMD generic encapsulated system architecture to combo AM5, that's the socket, 1.2.0.3F. This is the latest AGISA version. Improved memory compatibility and system stability. That means memory training is going to be super fast and enhanced CPU operating stability. So this last one 
is going to make micro adjustments to how the things like the PBO and the P states react to system load changes. So that's what that third one does. But this one in particular is the most interesting one because this one will allow for things like 256 gigabytes of memory. So, and it'll also improve the stability of the RAM. So this is why you update the BIOS because you get all these improvements. So we're gonna go ahead and download the global version. There we go, the download is complete. Now what we're going to do is we're going to extract that file. So here it is, it is an x870e ROM is the extension of the file. So if you're going to use BIOS flashback, you need to rename this to creative, it's all lowercase, creative.rom. That's if you want to use BIOS flashback with an ASRock motherboard. You need to copy that BIOS file over to the thumb drive. So now I have it in the thumb drive. You can see it's down here at the bottom. So we're gonna do this one for this ASRock Nova. And now all we're gonna do is reboot the computer and keep the USB drive plugged in because we're gonna go straight into the BIOS. While it's rebooting, what I, what I do, and you don't have to do this, but what I do is I just keep hitting the delete key. I just keep hitting the delete key. There's that little symbol there. This way it's gonna get me into the BIOS. There you go, there's that post beep and we're in. Okay, so now that we're in the BIOS, you can see there's a CPU, AMD Ryzen 7 9800X 3D. We have 64 gigs of RAM running at 5,600 mega transfers on this particular test configuration. So what we're gonna wanna do is we're going to go to tool in the menu here, tool, and we're going to go down to instant flash. Now, I wanna take this a step back. If we were in the easy mode, if you're in easy mode, you're, when you first get into the BIOS, it looks something like this. You're going to want to go to advanced because as far as I know, you can't access the BIOS update tool from here. So you're gonna to wanna to hit F6 on the keyboard or over here in the upper right, you wanna click on advanced mode to get to this menu. So we're gonna to go to tool and it's ASRock's BIOS updater tool is called instant flash. So, and you can see it tells you on the right here that the USB storage device must be FAT32, 16, or 12 file system. And FAT32 is the only relatively modern one. Anyway, FAT32, instant flash. It's gonna tell you, it's gonna warn you if you're using BitLocker, you need to back up your recovery key because once you flash the BIOS, you're gonna have to input that to get back into Windows. If you're not using BitLocker, then you don't need to worry about this. So we're gonna say yes. To continue and now here it brings up the menu we want the newest one the reason why this list is shown is because i have multiple older bioses on this thumb drive if you only have the latest one you will only see the latest one as a choice so the latest one is going to be 3.40 you can tell because these are older numbers so 3.40 we're going to click on that and it's like after pressing yes the system will automatically reboot please wait a few seconds do you want to update the uefi to that yes i do all right, so do not power off. Now it's gonna, it says that, but it's gonna turn off and turn back on and boot up in a script that's running right now to get the UEFI. You can hear those beeps going off and it's gonna go right in and it's gonna update the BIOS. So we're gonna keep this running in real time to give you viewers here that are thinking about doing this or probably have to do this, a look at how this looks. Okay, so here now, it's come up and it says, warning, system firmware is being updated, keyboard is locked. Do not turn the power off. Once firmware update is completed, system will automatically reboot. So you can see the progress here of it updating. Um, at this point in time, it's all hands off. You don't touch the computer, you just wait for this to complete. I haven't touched the computer. The last thing I did was click on yes to start the BIOS update. It, w it did its own thing turning off and did its own thing turning back on and it's running the script, it's doing all that stuff. So now it's just a matter of waiting for this to complete. 
And that's pretty much it. One thing I will say, keep in mind that every time you update the BIOS, any sort of overclock that you applied is removed. You're gonna have to redo all your settings, Expo, XMP, all that stuff has been removed after the BIOS update, which means you have to go back in and reconfigure those things or turn those things back on if you were using them. But I've made a video like this in the past, and we've also made a video on how to do BIOS flashback, I think last year, or maybe it was earlier this year, but so many people continue to leave comments on my, particularly my memory videos, you know, like they're trying to get like 460 memory working and it doesn't work for them. And my follow up question to them is what BIOS are you on? And then it's crickets. So uh, hopefully this will help people that are either trying to run higher capacity memory or are just concerned about system stability and quality of life improvements and that sort of thing. Because the BIOS update in general is supposed to address a lot of those issues. So again, do you have to do this? No, but in general, it is a good idea to be on a BIOS that is no older than like, I don't know, three to six months. Okay, so it just completed. It turned off. That was pretty fast. It kind of jumped straight to 100% and then immediately reset. So now it is doing memory training. All right. Down in there, code 15. All right, there we go. You can see it's coming up. All right, I wanna get in the BIOS. Okay, so we're in the BIOS again, but you can see now it says up at the top, BIOS version is version 3.4. So we are on the newest BIOS, but you can see our memory is running at 4,800 megatransfers. So you're going to need to go in here under DRAM profile and turn back on the XMP profile. And one thing I want to point out, when you adjust the XMP profile, the Azrock BIOS will automatically set these voltages because it's reading them off of the SPD profile. It set VDDIO to 1.25 volts, VDD, VDDQ 1.25 volts. That's because it's memory kit runs at 1.25 at 5600 CAS latency 30. The one voltage I want to draw your attention to is this one, SOC voltage. SOC voltage should never be higher than 1.25 volts. 1.2 volts is what this ASRock BIOS automatically set it to, which is totally fine. But if you're running a voltage of like 1.3 on this VSOC, eventually your CPU is going to probably f like die. So all those people that keep asking me about motherboards killing their CPUs, whatever, should they be worried? As long as your VSOC is at 1.2 volts, you don't need to worry about your CPU dying. It's for those of you that are running it at like 1.3, notice here it's in red, that's not a good sign, so you do not want it to be 1.3 volts. So that's pretty much how you set it and you make sure that your SOC is a good number there, 1.2 volts, that's good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and hit F10. It's going to go ahead and apply all of this. And then now it's gonna do the memory training for the XMP profile and then it's gonna boot into Windows. All right, so now we're in Windows, just wanna verify main board in CPU-Z, it says version 3.40 with the latest Agisa 1203. This is the BIOS date was August 27th, so there's CPU microcode. So that is pretty much it with the 9800X3D and the BIOS update on the ASRock X870 Nova. I'm checking here, my VSOC voltage is 1.19, so I don't have to worry about it like blowing up or whatever because a lot of people keep asking me about that. So this is what you want to look for is your VSOC voltage as long as it's around 1.2 or lower, it's fine. And some CPUs require a higher voltage. My 9950X3D, for example, that one requires 1.23 volts on VSOC or on uh, Expo 6400 in order to run stable. Um, but as long as your VSOC is like this, you don't have to worry about the CPU dying. And that's something that the BIOS should manage automatically. So, 
that's pretty much all I have to say. But hope you guys found this video useful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks.